Councilors, I hereby call the finance meeting uh, to order for Monday, July 15th, it being, uh, it being time. Madam Clerk, agenda item number one, please. Ordered that the common necessity oh. and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of West Meadow Drive, extending from Burroughs Road northerly to Julie Avenue, a distance of about 647 feet, more or less. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Invited Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner DPW. Time having arrived, this is a public hearing. I'm gonna call the, the meeting and the hearing to order. Uh, all those that are in favor, please come forward. I know the commissioner is here. Thank you, Commissioner. You have a statement for the committee. Congratulations, good evening, Councilors. Um, we have no objections to make this a, a public way. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Motion to recommend favorably. Council, this is a oh, public hearing. Hearing. we have okay. to keep it open. Is there anyone else here in the uh, chambers in favor? relative to this matter. Third and final time, anyone here in favor? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that part. Is there anyone here in opposition relative to agenda item one? Anyone in opposition? Third and final, I'm gonna close that. Councilor from uh, Ward 3, this is your, uh, thank, your th endeavor, I believe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to move for a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Second. Second. Uh, on, on the motion, uh, Councilor Derenquist. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I believe that one of our uh, guy who's been promoted tonight, uh, he's actually on the clock. I would like, you know, next agenda to be number three and four to take it out of order so they can actually get back on the street, if you don't mind, Mr. 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 Chairman. Uh, agenda number three we, and four. Council, we can't, we can't do that right now because we, we're still on the motion right now. Oh, yes, number I, one. I said after that one, if yes. you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So there's a motion made. It was properly seconded. A favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hands. All opposed, that motion carries. It's favorable back to the full council. Before we go to number two, Councilor Lodge has requested there's a motion to take three and four out of order. Is there a second to that motion, second. please? There's a second. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. We're gonna take number three and then number four and then we'll go back to number two, please, Madam Clerk. Promotion of Michael Livingston to the rank of Sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Michael Livingston, John Crowley, Chief of Police. You could come, come up here. Thank, no, thank you for being here, and I, and I, and I know the Chief's uh, designee is here as well. Um, any, any statement you want to make to the committee? Uh, just uh, congratulations, and uh, thank like you. you said, I hope to keep the city moving forward. Thank you. Motion thank to recommend you. favorable. Second. Second. It's motion on the floor is properly seconded. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. It's favorable back to the full council. Thank you. We'll take a vote, the next full council. Thank you very much. We're going to go on to number four, please. Promotion of David Farrell to rank of lieutenant in the Brockton Police Department. Invited David Farrell, John Crowley, Chief of Police. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. Do you have a statement for the committee? Uh, no, just that last month. Get, get to the mic. I think I speak for Mike too. We didn't realize in that the, we were on the agenda. We meant no disrespect and wouldn't have just skipped that. So. Oh, no, we didn't take it that way. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that at all. But motion recommend favorable. Motion on the floor is properly seconded. So favorable back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. We'll take a vote at the next council. Thank you. Have a good evening. I have no Madam idea. Clerk, we're going to go back to number two, please. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Julie Avenue, extending from Ash Street westerly, a distance of about 533 feet, more or less. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Invited Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner, DPW. Time having arrived, this is a public hearing. I'm gonna call it to order, and I know the commissioner's here, and I'll, I'll let him speak. Good, good evening, Mr. Commissioner. Good evening again, Councilors. And, and again, we have no objections to make this a public. Thank way. you, Mr. Commissioner. Okay. Anyone else here in favor? Third and final time. Anyone here about agenda item number two? That part of the hearing is closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition? Third and final opposition. That matter is closed as well. This is also Ward 3, Councilor. That's, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd also move for a favorable recommendation back to the full council. This motion on the floor is properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. If you're in your favor of that, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. That matter carries. It's going to go back favorable to the full city council. Thank you, Councilors. We'll go on to number five, please. Ordered 
accordance with MGL Chapter 44, that the City Council authorize the approval of MGL Chapter 32B, Section 20, as amended by Chapter 218, Section 15 of the Acts of 216, and further authorize the participation in the Plymouth County OPEB Trust Program, PCOT. Invited, Tory Clarkson, CFO. Councilors, if there's no objections, we're also joined by some uh, county elected official. Plymouth County Treasurer Thomas O'Brien is here, and the Plymouth County Commission, or one of the county commissioners, Mr. Greg Hanley, as well. Uh, if nobody objects, uh, I'm sure they could offer some, uh, some information, but Mr. Clarkson, you have the floor. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations. Thank you. I stand before you tonight to ask for your support for the City of Brockton to join the Plymouth County OPEB Trust. Uh, last week I did send some information to councillors, uh, uh, including uh, a document that provides answers to some frequently asked questions, an overview of the, uh, the Plymouth County OPEB Trust program, uh, and a sample vote that we had submitted to you for your suggestion. So this is something uh, that uh, Mayor Carpenter and I were working on for some time. Uh, the uh, lack of a plan as it relates to the City of Brockton's uh, OPEB liability has been something that has appeared on the City's management letter. Uh, and so, uh, for purposes of uh, addressing that for our bond rating agency, uh, for our external audit, and for good financial planning, we bring this plan to you. Uh, PCOT, the Plymouth County OPEB Trust, is not the only uh, legal or viable option, uh, but in our discussions and deliberations, uh, the former Mayor Carpenter, I believe that it is the best option. Um, we don't have tonight a funding plan before you. Uh, should you approve to move forward with the, the Plymouth County OPEB Trust, we plan then to create a funding plan and then submit uh, an order to you for beginning to address this important liability. So it now appears on, on our financial statements and just by having a plan and creating or joining actually this irrevocable trust uh, that will have a positive impact on our financial statements. Uh, so just the, the very fact that we're moving forward will have a positive impact on how uh, S&P or Moody's uh, and our external auditor look at this liability. It's su substantial and it's daunting, uh, but, but I believe that now is the time to address it and it's important to move forward. Mr. President, I'm happy to answer any questions. Councilor, point of information, um, some of you know, but some of you don't know, that I, I'm the Brockton representative for the, for the Plymouth County Advisory Board. Mayor Harrington appointed me uh, 11 years ago, um, so I'm very familiar with this. This would be just step one for a municipality, for a city or town. There's, there's other steps down the road, but this is step one, and the floor is open. Any questions for the CFO? We'll start with Councilor Fowler, then Councilor Cruz, please. Yes, good evening, Mr. Clarkson. How do we handle o OPEB uh, funding now? Just a straight appropriation or? We, we don't, Councillor. Oh. Yeah, so there is no plan in place now, which is why I believe it's important to take a step forward. Okay, now, for the benefit of those of us who don't usually get involved in this, delineate some of the benefits, just if, if you can. In other words, why, why is this the right step at this time, other than making it appear as though we've addressed the issue uh, when the bond rating companies decide to rate the city? What, what are the tangible benefits that would make uh, selling points for this? Well, I would say that what you just mentioned, Council, is probably the primary benefit, that uh, uh, it, it's important to, it, it, as part of the process, every time we borrow money, we have what's called a ratings call. Uh, and right now, Standard & Poor's is the company that, that conducts that. And one of the issues that they ask during those calls is how are we handling, handling our OPEB liability? So uh, it, it's, it, it's a sign that we are aware of the liability and that we're committed to, to doing something about it. Uh, one of the other reasons is because as we begin to chip away, we have an opportunity uh, or a plan to address that liability. Uh, so it, it it really, I think, speaks to our attention to detail as it relates to, to the finances. Uh, and although whether or not you have addressed your OPEB liability is not the sole determinant in a bond rating, 
continuing to not have a plan could certainly contribute to a negative outlook. And so this is, I think, a simple and appropriate uh, and tested uh, option for us to address that. Right, you said there were other options. What are the criteria you used to settle on this option? What, what convinced you that this would be the right step as opposed to other steps that we might take? There's no minimum contribution. Uh, PCOT offers an option that we can literally do a test run and if should the, the city decide at some future date to withdraw, there are no penalties. Uh, those are probably the, the two main advantages. So, the, so there, as uh, Council President said, this is the first step, but we still maintain a great deal of flexibility going down the road? Well, this is the first step in a multi-step process, uh, but uh, if by flexibility you mean the ability to, to change the option in the future, yeah. uh, yes. Okay, but you mentioned irrevocable, and that, that's a word that always makes one well. wonder, are we doing something now that absolutely forever uh, uh, yeah. precludes us from doing anything different? So the, the, the trust itself that has been set up, not by us, but by Plymouth County, is, I believe, an irrevocable trust, correct, Treasurer? Yeah. So, so when I used irrevocable, that, that's what I meant. So it's joining their trust. But by the rules that they've set up, we have the option at some future point to withdraw. Okay. Could they, if there's no objection, could, could our county officials offer some perhaps uh, direct data on how it's benefited other communities here in Plymouth County? And sure, sure. happy to defer. I guess the reason I'm engaged in this is that when people see OPEB, they worry about retirees and retirement and how is this going to affect me and will my benefits after I retire be uh, diminished? Will they be uh, compromised in any way? Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased to have you here and good to see you again. Thank you, Councillor. And, and those are all important questions. Before I begin, if it's all right, Mr. President, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. Secondly, as a representative of the county, uh, I want to offer condolences on the loss of Mayor Carpenter and our deepest sympathies uh, and certainly respects to the city of Brockton with how you handled uh, both the passing and the transition. Uh, truly remarkable and the city should be proud uh, for the way that all of that was handled. If it's okay, Mr. President, and to the councils, let me just give you a brief overview of the Plymouth County OPEP Trust, and then I think we'll answer some of those questions, and hopefully that makes sense. Because Plymouth County OPEP Trust was created just for the city of Brockton. Now that sounds a bit particular and somewhat amazing, but it's quite true. Uh, let me explain the genesis. Uh, OPEP, other post-employment benefits, involves and entails the health insurance benefits for municipal employees. And rest assured, the city of Brockton is just like most of the other municipalities, not just in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but around the country as they're dealing with this now requirement law statute to fund this liability similar to pension. So when you're thinking OPEB, think decades ago of how we began to fund our pension liability. Every municipality uh, across the country now has this liability on their books that they need to begin to address. And communities are figuring out how to begin to do that. And for the city of Brockton, uh, we looked at some old data early, but we got some information from your chief financial officer and in conversations uh, previously with Mayor Carpenter that that uh, is a, a very significant number. It's showing up on your uh, audit reports. It's showing up on your financial statements. And now is the time to do something. And so a few years ago, uh, back in 2014, the advisory board that the president mentioned of which he sits tasked me as the county treasurer with coming up with a program that would begin to address these benefits and was quite candidly better than everything that was currently available. Uh, and the program that we created and presented to the Plymouth County Commissioners to vote on and to create was the Plymouth County OPEP Trust. <laughs> and in short, it is a multi-employer trust set up for governmental entities to begin to fund their OPEB liability in a manner that saves them money, has low fees, and is going to produce over a period of time a greater rate of return than most of the other options. And so on January 15, 2015, the Plymouth County Commissioners, and Commissioner Hanley is here today, voted to create the Plymouth County OPEB Trust for governmental entities within Plymouth County. Now, ironically, some of our neighboring counties had heard that we were putting together this multi-employer trust. I received calls from other county treasurers and asked if the county commissioners would consider including them in the creation of the Plymouth County OPEB Trust. 
And so I presented that to the county commissioners and they agreed to add our neighbors in Barnstable, Bristol, and Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. So any governmental entity in those four counties is eligible to join the Plymouth County OPEB Trust. Our first member uh, joined in June of 2015, uh, the great town of Wareham. Uh, we expected a few years later that we would have five or six members and perhaps five million dollars or seven million dollars of assets under management as we grew this program and explained it to groups like yourselves. I'm pleased to report that as we stand here today, we have more than 28 member units and we have more than 20 million dollars in assets under management. Over the last three years, we have an annualized return, annualized return, did I say that's annualized return, of more than 11%. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't promise those returns all of the time, but I can tell you is that we have a very sophisticated team assembled for your, for your particular needs. That team that we've assembled includes PARS, the Public Agency Retirement Services. Kate Canney has joined me today. She's to my right. She is our representative from PARS. PARS is the largest administrator of OPEB benefits in the country. They were some of the first to do this around the country, and they brought the concept to of us, to us of a multi-employer trust. And so they provide all of the administrative support that we need. Otherwise, the city, as any municipality would have to do, you'd have to hire your own support staff to manage this. We provide that for you. In addition, we bring U.S. Bank to the table as the custodian and investment advisor. U.S. Bank is the largest holder of OPEB trust resources and finances in the country. They are the largest bank nobody's heard about. They are the fifth largest bank in the country. We get all of their professional expertise brought to the table. People ask me, Treasurer O'Brien, how do you get those returns? I wish I could take all the credit. It's really the investment professionals that we bring to the table from U.S. Bank to put together the portfolio. What we've also created, and, and the finance director uh, mentioned this and touched on this, we created a vehicle that serves our municipalities particularly. We have an investment committee that our members have voting members on the investment committee, unlike some of the other options you may have at your disposal. We also have the lowest fees uh, available and we have no minimum contribution. We have no minimum timelines for requirement and we have no penalties. And I really want to emphasize this. We have no penalties if you decide that joining us isn't what suits you. Uh, unlike other options, if you were to join other options, they impose penalties and fees if you decide to leave. We don't have those. The reason we did that is because we know we want to be the best. How can we be sure we're the best? Because our members will require that we continue to do that and provide those level of services. So we really feel that we have put together a program that serves those municipalities. Let me just, if I might, Mr. President, mention a few that have joined us. The city of Attleboro, the city of Weymouth. Now I mention Weymouth particularly because uh, some of you know that they have a rather robust finance department. They spent seven months analyzing all of their options available for OPEB trust and OPEB investments and they chose the Plymouth County OPEB trust and they've been very glad that they did. Their returns have been remarkable. Uh, it includes from uh, the, all the way from the town of Berkeley to Quincy College. Uh, the list goes on. We have a booklet for uh, the counselors to present to you at your at your pleasure. Uh, we know what we're looking for is a favorable favorable report to the full body, uh, but we have that information in a book. Uh, we really feel what we've created is a program suited to our municipalities to begin to address this issue. Lastly, to address Council Councillor Farwell's question, the reason that you need to do this now is because you're under what's called the pay-as-you-go mechanism and you're getting a lower discount rate, that is the rate of assumed return based on the pay-as-you-go system. Right now, as we look at your financials, that's anywhere between three to 4%. By joining a certified trust, and that's what we present to you, our group has been certified federally by the state uh, and at the local level. We have a legal opinion uh, that says that we meet all the requirements. We are an IRS certified trust so you meet all the guidelines immediately. Standard & Poor's, Moody's will look at that and notice that you have taken that step. By beginning to then fund that, your discount rate, and it's important, will go from three to four to anywhere between five to seven, which will lower that liability by, any, by as much as anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20%, depending on the discount rate assigned. Let me give you an example, if I might. 
Plymouth County was one of the first members of the Plymouth County OPEB Trust. <laughs> we would expect that, wouldn't we? Plymouth County's liability prior to joining the OPEB Trust was $32 million. Wow. By joining the Plymouth County OPEB Trust and putting in $125,000 a year, minimally, we've lowered that liability in three years to $16 million. Wow. Wow, that's, good. that's the type of effort that our members are putting forth and are able to begin to see that positive reduction in liability because of the team that we've put together uh, to help to serve you. So we really believe the time is now. We would be thrilled to have the city of Brockton as a member of the Plymouth County OPEB Trust. You know, I'm saying this with some humor, but I mean it. You're one of the first financial people and a treasurer that is easy to understand and make sense. Usually they talk in a different language that most people don't grasp, and, uh, and I appreciate that. It, so this is really an investment strategy more than anything else. No collective bargaining implications, no changes in benefits for any retirees. Uh, it, it, it's a way for the city to hopefully uh, gain more return for investments, which helps offset that pay-as-you-go, which we're involved in now. Is that, a, is that a fair summary? Absolutely correct, and thank you for the compliment. Okay, <laughs> I'm all done. Thank you. Thank you, Council Paul. <laughs> Council Cruz, please. Thank you. A uh, very good explanation, so a lot of what I had, but uh, maybe for Mr. Clarkson. Uh, so currently, what is our unfunded liability? As of our financial statements for June 30, 2018, which is the last financial statements we have, our total accrued liability is approximately $740 million. $740 million. And if we were to join this, what do you see us putting in? Well, let me rephrase that. So the payback is we're paying out right now those retirements and trying to nip away at the unfunded liability, but basically we get nowhere. Um, so how much would we be putting in yearly for now if we were to do this? When the mayor and I were discussing it, what we had thought uh, was for a first appropriation to do something very modest, maybe $100,000, uh, and then develop, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, a long-term funding strategy for an annual amount that we would, would put in the trust. And so obviously in future years that will be dependent on uh, what our financial conditions are. One of the things I've learned over the years is when you put financial policies together, and one of the many policies, written policies we're working on is uh, an, an OPEB policy here in the city. And it's really important to go back to uh, the way that the rating agencies look at our performance to not uh, overpromise and underperform. So that's why I would suggest a more modest appropriation to commit to on a regular basis. And then if we add more, uh, then we've outperformed our expectations in our policy. So I guess my question in, in a simple way, if you can, where is our, so we put that in and we start to grow at 11% uh, our number. How is the return to us <laughs> that beneficial? Where is that actual number? Do we yearly get money out to go towards our, our unfunded liability? Is it just that we're building something over the next 10 to 15 years? How, does, how, how is it that, it's, that we're benefiting from this? Well, it, it's the latter. So as the amount that we have in the trust builds, our, our uh, proportional amount, uh, then the financial statements reflect that amount that, that's been accrued. So we don't touch that right now, we just try to build that? Correct, I would say we don't touch it in our lifetimes probably. And the unfunded liability by definition is, how long is that stretched out, that 740 million? Well, it's different than say our retirement liability, right, which is we, our plan is to be fully funded in 2032, I believe. I believe. Uh, the OPEB liability is, is different. And I, and the, because what the, the liability says, the way it's calculated, is it's the, generally the amount that we would have to have on hand if everybody retired at the same time, and it's a snapshot. So it, it really is, in many ways, uh, a paper liability, and, and some of that we really will never come to pass because uh, some people leave service, some people pass away. Um, 
So it, it really is an accounting mechanism to make that calculation. Uh, so it's important to address it, uh, but I don't think it's frankly realistic to think we'll ever have $740 million set aside. And then by putting, let's say, a modest amount of 100,000 in, and I assume we'd, within a few years, hope to be at more like 200, 250, how much would we be saving when we go to bond? Well, so that's the key, right? And, and um, the, 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 it's a tough answer to give, but what I can tell you is uh, if we hope, and I do hope, uh, in a couple of years to work with S&P for actually an upgrade in our bond rating. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't address the OPEB liability, there's no way that would happen. Uh, if we are able to get uh, an upgrade in the bond rating, then that's a very real tangible savings because that directly impacts our interest rates. And even though the interest rates are really good right now, uh, by having a better bond rating, we would have slightly better interest rates. Now, is that because the bond companies think you've got this money behind you if there were an issue, or it's just that they now s realize that we ha have a way to attack the unfunded liability if it, ca it came about? It's the latter, Councilor, for sure, yeah. So that they, they know we have our, our act together, to use a common phrase, as it relates to the OPEB liability. So they want to see that we're aware of it and we're doing something about it. That's really the key. It's not so much how much it's we have set aside. not the dollar amount so much, just the fact that you're doing something. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Cruz. Any other questions, Council? Oh, Councilor Castro, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. I have a few questions for Mr. O'Brien. Good evening, Councilor. Mr. O'Brien, my pizza buddy. <laughs> Good evening. So here, here are a few questions. Is there a reserve fund or a floor guarantee so that if there's a major loss in the market, the city's original investment is protected dollar for dollar? The short answer to the question is no, no matter where you would invest. No. No option will give you that. Okay. That's, that's not available anywhere. It's not available anywhere. Okay. Is there a legal list of investments in terms of the bond type, the bond quality, stock choice? I believe what the council is referring to is something codified in Mass General Law called the Mass Legal List, yes, which is yes. put out by the Division of Banks. Uh, for those counselors that are unaware of the Mass Legal List, it is a uh, somewhat arcane list put out by the Division of Banks, which is presumed to be a list of stocks uh, and bonds that are relatively safe uh, compared to the general marketplace. Uh, a couple of interesting comments, if I might, about the legal list. Uh, first of all, it hadn't been updated for 10 years uh, until recently. Uh, the legal list included railroads that were no longer in existence, banks that had been uh, defunct for decades, uh, and include stocks that quite candidly have uh, as much uh, ups and downs in the marketplace as, as some of the most volatile securities. Uh, however, it is presumed simply because it's called the legal list to be safer. Uh, I suppose in some respects it is safer. Um, the short answer to the question is uh, folks that are looking to invest into the future can certainly be ultra conservative. However, uh, it is my humble opinion and, and those of us that are looking at investing long term uh, that uh, being conservative tends to miss out on the best of the markets uh, and is not oftentimes the best long term strategy. Think of you will of your pension and I'll uh, mention on a comment that Councillor Cruz made about this. Think if you will about your pension obligation 40 years ago. How much had communities set aside for their pension obligation 40 years ago? I would suggest very few communities had set aside anything. And there was a federal law and a state law that was passed that said all municipalities needed to begin to fund your pension liability starting from zero uh, over the course of, and they envisioned 30 or 40 years, 40 years actually, and they envisioned that it would be fully funded in 2028. Now imagine back 40 years ago, if you would, that you invested in a legal list or a very conservative investment that returned anywhere between 1% or 2% over the course of that 40 years. You would quite candidly be way behind uh, in the investment because equities over that period of time, coupled with fixed income investments, have returned on average 8.5%. So those people that invested in a thoughtful, reasonable portfolio, anywhere between 60 to 40 equities to fixed, tended to get that seven to 8% return 
and have seen a better return over 40 years of their investment and will be fully funded sooner. Now let's fast forward to today. That's exactly where we are with OPEB. You're starting from ground zero. I would suggest monies that you are putting in need to be invested, not for today, not for tomorrow, not for five years from now, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And we know over the course of history that a portfolio designed to get between six to seven to eight percent is a better portfolio for your long-term investments. So we've created a structure designed to do that over the course of that period of time. To get to Councillor Cruz's question, it is for the employees. This is uh, for their health insurance. Now I'm sure None of you will receive Christmas cards or thank yous for doing something like this on their behalf, but it is truly for the employees in the city of Brockton to make sure that you protect their health insurance costs down the road. Did that answer your question, Counselor? Kind of, yes. So you mentioned earlier that there's an annual return of 11%, and that's wicked, wicked good. How are you doing that? What's the risk profile? Um, so again, we are fairly aggressive. Let me say, Past performance is not indicative of future performance. <laughs> we have designed a portfolio that we believe will return between six and 8% over the course of 30 to 40 years. So it's a portfolio designed of between 60 to 65% equities and the rest in fixed incomes. We have an investment professional at US Bank and I say a professional, we actually have there a thousand professionals putting together a portfolio for us. And what's unique about our portfolio is that we have low fees because US Bank does not recommend proprietary products. They do not recommend products that they have investments in themselves. They do not recommend products where investors take them out for cruises or for golf. They only recommend the best products in the entire marketplace at the lowest fees. So we've created a product that not only is expected to have good solid returns over a long period of time, but also has some of the lowest fees in the industry. And we do that through ETFs and mutual funds, as well as a number of passive investments, which are tied into particular indices. So we have to trust you to choose the risk profile. We can't choose our own. So the good news is you're trusting US Bank, a team of 1,000 professionals, an investment committee made up of members of our group, including a selectman, an employee, a um, treasurer, an administrator, uh, as part of that investment committee. You're trusting history, you're trusting past performance, uh, and you're trusting uh, an organization that has been set up to be responsive to your particular needs. There are other options available to you, but I would posit to this group that none of them will be as responsive as we are. Um, we are a governmental overseen product, so our goal is not to make a profit, but to make sure we make money for our investees and our performance. Now I will say this, while we believe we have designed a premier maximum portfolio, uh, the investment committee that I mentioned earlier is considering offering other options to our members, uh, a few that would be considered a, a little bit more conservative, one that would be considered more aggressive so that there would be choices on the table as of right now that hasn't been adopted, but the investment committee meets next Friday, and I do expect that those will be adopted next Friday. I would suggest, however, even though those options are available, the city of Brockton putting in small amounts of money would be better served by a more aggressive portfolio. Uh, I did want to answer a question about the bond rating. Let me just mention that Dighton Rehoboth uh, has joined our program. By simply joining and making a minimum contribution, they saw their bond rating upgraded twice. So what we present to the city of Brockton is an opportunity to join a program, begin investing, and show a sign of commitment to the rating agencies, to your employees, uh, that you're serious about uh, beginning to fund this long term. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Brien. No other questions. Thank you, Councilman Castro. Any other questions or any follow-ups, Councils? I'm going to entertain a motion. Motion recommend favorably. Second. There's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded favorable. Back to the full council. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Raise your hand if you're opposed. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Yeah. And also, uh, County Commissioner Hanley and Treasurer uh, O'Brien, and also, if you could thank uh, um, Commissioner Sandra Wright, 
you all came uh, to, uh, to honor Bill Copperner last week, and it was duly noted. So thank you very much for that as well. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you. And I would be remiss, uh, uh, Chairman Commissioner Pilata was also uh, in attendance. Uh, Usually I can hear the commissioner. I didn't hear him, so. <laughs> Usually we can too. Uh, yes, it was our honor and privilege to be there to join you uh, in paying due and, and appropriate respect to the mayor. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight uh, as well, your representative. Have a good evening. Thank you. You as well. Thank you, counselors. Madam Clerk, we're going to go on to the last agenda item, which is number six. <clears throat> Ordered a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One, a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability which was the responsibility of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and which now may be incurred by the city be provided to the city council. Two, if payments from public funds have been made for charges formally required of the corporation, such information shall be provided to the city council. Three, documents and information requested shall be provided within 14 days of the date of this order. Invited, Michael Gallerani, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corporation, Dan Evans, President, Brockton 21st Century Corporation, Philip Nasralla, City Solicitor, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, <coughs> Mary Lynn Peters Chu, City Auditor, James Cassieri, Building Superintendent, Brent Warren, Attorney B21. Council, it's just for a piece of information, Attorney Warren, who's here tonight, and Mr. Gallerani, thank you for being here as well. Attorney Warren had uh, submitted a letter uh, seeking a postponement or a continuance. Um, one, one basis of that was the untimely passing of Mayor Carpenter. Um, uh, Moses Rodriguez, who was then the council president uh, at that time, uh, responded back that the CPA component, the accounting component of this, shouldn't be discussed tonight because they're still doing their, their review and their audits of the books. Uh, but Mr. Gallerani is here. He wasn't able to join us last time. If there's any other questions, by all means. Um, so the request for continuance was denied uh, in partial context, but we will be uh, having Mr. Warren and the other powers to be come back once the audit is, is, is finalized, and we'll have other questions, financial and whatever questions at that time. Okay? Okay. Attorney Warren and Mr. Gallerani, you have the floor. Actually, may I have the floor? Uh... Absolutely, Counselor. Okay. Uh, Councilors, I'm going to be brief tonight because I do want to see the, uh, I, I want to see them have their annual meeting and vote to approve the, the FY 2019 audit. Uh, Mr. Gallerani was not able to join us the last, at the last meeting, and so I want to ask him some preliminary questions to try to get some context as to where we are, uh, a couple of specific questions, and then I'm going to halt and wait for the, for the, uh, for the audit to come in. So, uh, Mr. Gallerani, I did read your emails and I did read all of what you sent. I, this is, this is the ever growing B21 file that I go through page by page. <laughs> uh, I think the first thing I'd like to ask you, what, what exact date did you come on as executive director of B21? First Approximately. Of, um, good evening, Councilors. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thank President you, Mr. Gallerani. Sullivan. Thank you. Um, March 2015. March of 2015. Right, what what internal financial controls did B21 have for revenues coming in and expenditures going out? For example, was there a limit which you could expend, but if it went over that limit, you had to get board approval? Or, uh, tell me how you. In, in, up till up till just about a year ago, uh, anything two thousand dollars needed two signatures on a check. Two signature on a, two signatures on a check. But that was relaxed a year ago. And anything over two thousand would require uh, two approval? signatures. No, just needed two signatures. Just two si and the two signatures would be it was the um, board president yep. and, and one other member. No. <clears throat> In 2015, actually in March, uh, apparently the p people who were pushing the casino rented a room or rented time at, uh, Shaw, at the Shaw Center and, and uh, B21 brought in about $3,700. Did that go into, 
did your revenues go into a single account or did you have different accounts based on revenue from the rocks and revenue from any Shaw's activities or how did that work? Is it just in, one account or many? In the, in the initial year, um, yes, it was commingled, um, but tracked obviously by our accountants. Um, and then I switched it in the subsequent year, we opened separate accounts for the stadium and for operations. The first year I was there, if you recall, we had a consultant um, that had bridged between the past executive director and me. Uh, and Gordon he something, yeah, Gordon, Gordon Gordon Carr. And uh, he continued into the fall um, that year specifically to work on issues relative to the stadium and the, and the conference center because I'm an economic development guy. I'm not a facilities guy. Um, that's something that I learned on the fly, to, quite honestly. But, but we can agree that Brockton 21st Century Corporation was in general description the landlord for the Shaw Center and the Rocks Stadium. Is that correct? Uh, um, we were what the stewards and we had, a lease, we had a lease with EMC. Yeah. And in, in that lease, um, included the Shaw Center as well as the stadium. So anything happening at the Shaw's or at the stadium uh, beyond their normal monthly rent would go to them. And if they reported it, we would collect it. Um, <coughs> no, I, but, but I mean, would you agree that you were the landlord? You, you yes, had a, we were, as you the had stewards, we were the landlords, yes. Professional responsibility to oversee those two facilities on behalf of the city pursuant to the original agreement? Yes. All right, now, how often did you or did you cause someone to go into the stadium or into the Shaw's Center for the purposes of making sure that we were protecting the city's asset, that it was clean, that we didn't have any health code violations, mm -hmm. that we didn't have any damage or missing property? Did that occur regularly? Regularly. And so, regularly. Right, and, and how often would you describe as regularly? Minimally once a week, um, and typically two or three times a week, and towards the end, almost daily. Okay, so, and that would be you or someone else? Many times me. Well, well Many times me, but we was had- Was anyone else employed but we had, or, or, or- Well, we had a number <clears throat> of, of uh, prov service providers, plumbers, electricians, and the such, and so if they saw something, they would they would call me right away. And so they were the, the eyes and ears sometimes um, just because they could be, and they had the institutional knowledge. We, had, we have a, our electrician um, worked on the Shaw's and on the stadium, f I think since its inception. So um, he knew it better than I could ever know it, and he would point things out to me. So uh, his, his input was, incredibly okay, valuable, as was the, the plumbers uh, and others, just because they had been around with us for a while. I, I guess maybe I've misled you. I, I wasn't talking about having a particular worker, a plumber or electrician or a sanitary worker or something. I, I was talking about what was the board's requirement for just routine inspections to make sure that that property wasn't spinning out of control with respect to repairs needed, roof leaks, uh, electrical problems. Did, and you said you went in yourself many times, but did anyone else just make a general inspection, not necessarily someone we hired to do a, a work? Uh, um, before, I, before I came on board, uh, the board hired um, um, a gentleman, um, I think his first name is Andrew, but Voikos that came in and, and did an assessment of both buildings. Um, and that report has been shared with the council in the past. You might not recall it, but it covered a lot of, a lot of situations with regard to both um, that needed uh, attention and, and really, you know, looking to the future of the th as well as the immediate. So, and then a lot of it was echoed last year, if you recall, when I came to the council. Um, I, I, do, I do remember that presentation, and I don't mean to cut you off, but we're, we're going to get into more nuts and bolts of this as, as we go forward. Uh, 
One of the documents that you sent was report to the City of Brockton insurance claims, settlements and improvements, yes. Campanelli Stadium, FY18 to FY19. One of the ones that, well, a couple of them jumped out at me. Uh, roof gutter membrane replacement, apparently a check or, or an amount of $23,556.90 was paid on 11 27 what, what was the work that was done there? Um, the, the roof system at the Shaw Center. Um, how do I say this? Poorly designed. Um, that's being polite. Um, and the drain system would be the victim of debris that would blow up onto the roof and get captured in the drain system. Baseballs. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at how many baseballs we, we had pulled out of there. Um, and that just, that and time, uh, as well as weather conditions, caused the drain system to fail. Now, I'm gonna back up for you. Part of those walkthroughs, we would find that the roof had situations that were causing leaks. You know, you'd see them and we'd spot them and we'd number them and, okay, let's figure this out. So over the course of time, we did a number of things to try to correct the problem, and it, it always felt like it was the, a Band-Aid approach, but it was the only way possible because we were very limited in terms of the resources available. Um, we started to replace the screws that held the panels down and some of the sheathing underneath it, um, and that was the result um, of one of the major snowstorms. Um, back in before I came, that it was that year, but before I came, uh, decisions were made, or the year before, there were decisions made about how to remove the snow from that roof, and it did some damage. Um, the roof is a bowl, and it, it really is very limited how to have the water escape. Um, so when you, when the screws are very vital to holding it tight, so we replaced some of the screws in the sheathing, thought we had it. Uh, every now and then you'd see one pop, okay, so again, it's, it's the same situation. And then one day, it just, it, we, and we knew the drain was a problem. But again, thinking we, we wanted to include that in the major roof uh, replacement, which if you go back to that report last year, said the roof, and the HVAC system should be done all at the same time um, because the HVAC systems were on their last legs, so let's just address it all at once. So the, the, the drain system, I almost said gutter, but the drain system um, failed. So the decision had to be made, let's fix this because honestly we had a board meeting there one day and it was raining more inside than it was outside. And it would cause damage to the front of the building and along the front of the building, if you're familiar with it, is an office, the lobby, and the restrooms. And they would just take a beating um, and you couldn't, couldn't present that to potential operators or users of the facility in the condition they were after those, those rainstorms. So I would constantly be sending people in to replace ceiling tiles, clean, the, clean it up, um, Touch up the paint to make it but, presentable. But, but with respect to the twenty-three thousand five hundred. That was replacing the drain system. It yes. was a roof gutter membrane replacement. Yes. yes. That, okay. And any any and and you said some gutter repairs and roof repairs. Clean out clean out the uh, the drain system. Okay. And come down. Yes. Uh, and making an assessment of the roof and deciding really what the long range should be. Okay. Before I ask Mr. Casseri a question. <laughs> I notice on 11-30-2018, some heaters were purchased. Protection against severe cold weather, $14,500. What, what were those heaters, if you those, know? Those were leased heaters. I, I beg your pardon? They were leased. They, they were leased? They were not purchased, yes. And what um, was the lease period because, for it? Because uh, went through, I believe, through April of this year. So it went from last fall to the spring to cover the winter season because last winter, um, due to a malfunction or a mismanagement of the, of the heating system, we wound up having sprinkler systems. Uh, well, if, if, if you oh. cut a check 
and paid on November 30th, 2018 for heaters, you hadn't gone into the winter of 2019 yet, and in fact, the city took over mm -hmm. the, the, the stadium on, as of January 1st. What would, it have, what would have precipitated spending $14,500 for heaters? Protecting the building. I beg your pardon? It just comes down to protecting the asset. No, but what would cause you to spend that kind of money when you hadn't hit the cold weather yet? It was November. It was November. I, I understand that. And it was that. How, do you know how many heaters were purchased? So they were leased, I believe. I'm not, I, I can't answer that. Well, the, the reason I ask is that the city actually purchased some heaters, and they paid $849 for each of them. They purchased three. So using your figure of 14500 you would have had to have purchased 17 heaters at $849 each to reach that 14500 I cannot speak to it because I don't know the specs on the heaters that they purchased versus those that were leased. Well, ours were done on the advice of our electrician. Um, and again, you receive counsel from your vendors that you trust. You build a but team. But somebody has to check. Somebody has to go to the vendor and say, what are you delivering? What, I mean, it, let me ask you this. Is the, of all these expenditures, do we have documentation to back up what, we, what was purchased? For example, that will there be invoices showing how many yes. heaters were purchased yes. and the brand name and yes. the BTUs and yes. all of that stuff? Okay, well, that's... All right, security cameras. And let, let's, let's go to security services. Now, is it accurate to say, and I, I think I've read it, that that you signed a contract with a security company for security services there, that still is perpetuated to this day, that the city has to pay for that? Um, yes, there was a contract, and that was, that was how we addressed having the cameras installed at the stadium and at yep. the Shaw Center post the break-in that caused extensive but damage. The, the contract, we, didn't, we did not pay for the cameras. We paid for the service to monitor those cameras. Right. Wasn't it a three-year contract? Uh, I believe it could. I believe it could be as long as five. As long I, as five. I don't five? recall it off the top of my head. E ending. But ending when, if you remember? Well, it was initiated in uh, eighteen, so twenty-three. How would you know you were going to have the revenue to pay for that? How could you sign a five-year contract? for security services, not knowing whether the corporation would have sufficient revenue to pay for that. Again, protecting the asset. You make, well, you make the decision, and, you, and you, there's going to be a revenue stream somewhere, somehow, yes. Well, that, that, that's, that's a great assumption, but uh, okay. Well, in, in its history, com Counselor, it always had a revenue stream. Yes, thanks to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the taxpayers. The, the asset right. belongs to the taxpayers. Well, honestly. That, that, that is correct, but it, it, but the taxpayers of this city have have certainly uh, given greatly towards that. Uh, I read the memos that can you, we oh, that you can sent we back up on the on with regard to the security cameras. It's my understanding when we when we made the transition that the security cameras were going to be piggybacked with the school departments. Therefore, reducing the cost, the monthly cost. That was how I left it with the, with the mayor and with the school department officials. That they were going to have the contract because it's the same company, and that's why we chose that company because it was the same as the school department. But, but it wasn't done. We just didn't pull someone out of the air. It was with purpose that this was the same company the school department used. Uh, the confidence of that and knowing if we transition the property that the school department would be able to piggyback it on their contract, which they have paid nowhere near what we were paying, but it's the economy of scale. But, but you still, and, and, I, and I am putting you on the spot, you still signed a binding legal agreement for on security behalf of the corporation, services yes, I did. on behalf of the corporation for five years ending in 2023, mm -hmm. when of course, fiscal year to fiscal year, you had no idea what the revenues would be. Somebody was gonna have to pay that. All right, I want to go lastly to, uh, because I do want to wait, colleagues, for, uh, 
for the financials to come in. Um, and I, because the last form 990 I was able to get off the internet was years ago. You sent a series of memos to uh, Mr. Kasseri in the building department. Um, January 18th, 2019, attached the two cancellation notices for insurance that EMC is required to maintain as part of their lease agreement. It is a common occurrence that they fail to pay, are canceled, and then reinstated. It is something that needs to be monitored. Why is it his responsibility to do that? It's the, wh why wouldn't it be the corporation's responsibility and your legal counsel to monitor whether EMC is living up to its agreement to maintain liability insurance? Because we were no longer the stewards of the facility. I, I beg your pardon? This is 2019. We had passed it on in December. But I, I understand that, but why would it be the building department's responsibility? Because I was told by the mayor's office that the building okay. Mr. Wood All right. okay. be responsible. Okay, and, and likewise, then I would say... Uh, if you notice, the mayor's office was CC'd on everything. Yep, yep. <coughs> okay, so it, it, once that happened, it was... All right, now, here's an interesting one. Attached <coughs> is the Columbia Gas invoice for the month of January 2019. The amount due was $2,395.93. You're not certainly suggesting that we consumed, we the city, because we took it over in January, we consumed $2,395 worth of gas because that doesn't match some of the other expenses you've listed for the gas company, which were much lower. It was the bill that we received, and I had, I had asked for a final reading and settled that amount in January. <coughs> Well, uh, colleagues, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold. I, I've got a lot more to do here. I think most of you know I, I do spend a lot of time hoping I know what the hell I'm talking about, and there's just a lot here to, there's a lot here to master, and I, I suspect there'll be more coming. So I, I thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Fowler. Any other councilors have questions? Councilor Castro, please. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Gallerani. Thank evening. you for being here. I'm looking at very large document entitled, um, what is this? It's the license. The lease agreement with Sta EMC? Well, the cover sheet, excuse me, says stadium lease between B21 and EMC, okay? Um, my first question is on the disclaimer, which is on page number one. It says it's a representation of a document between B21 and EMC. <laughs> and it's believed to be true to be assigned original. It's not intended to provide a legal representation of a stadium agreement. What does that mean? Because I cleaned it up. It was, it wasn't, it didn't present itself well, but word for word, and Brent has, has reviewed it, it's word for word to the original lease, but that is the lease that, uh, that we use as a reference because it's cleaner and neater than the original. It's what? cleaner and neater, it's easier to read. The font, the spacing, the original is kind of not the, not the best fair representation. representation. It's a difficult to read. The original is a difficult So that, that in essence is a synopsis of what the actual agreement is? Wow. Does it incorporate all terms? Uh, I'd have to review it thoroughly to make sure it has all the terms. Thank you, thank you. I'd like us to receive a copy of the original contract and also the agreement amendment dated November of 2013. I'm not quite sure how to get a hold of something that's on file at 21st Century's office on School Street. So I'd prefer that you provide it to the council. Our council will provide that. Okay. Okay. And then my second question is, I'm looking at Article 9 on page 30. It deals with facility maintenance. And it says that ordinary and incidental maintenance and day-to-day -day operation of structural components of the stadium, including heating, ventilation, air conditioning, plumbing, electric and field irrigation and drainage systems, are the responsibility of the team to maintain in good working order. Um, I know that there's been a problem with the ventilation. Yes. Weren't they supposed to keep it in good repair? Didn't, isn't that what I just read? Yes. But they did but not? It's, but it's also um, 17 years old. 
Uh, it's, it's, our HVAC company is d determined last year before I came in uh, that it was time to replace because repairing it was not an option any longer. And prior to that determination, did the tenant, the team, take care of it? Did they do uh, maintenance? As I understand it, it hasn't been maintained in a long time. We maintained it. B21 maintained it. Well, then why wasn't, if it was the team's responsibility, why weren't their feet held to the fire? We brought EMC in a number of times under default. That was, it, maintenance issues were issues that were raised. Uh, in the end, um, we relaxed our default for a number of reasons. Um, primarily because the city wanted baseball it. And that was the, that was the marching order. The stadium has to stay open. The, did EMC know that? Probably. So we were in between. People will tell you, I've been very militant about, about our relationship with our tenant over the years. Um, it, was a very, it was a very difficult relationship. That's as much as I probably should say on it. Well, I, that's, that's, that's a shame and but it's, it was, it was, it but was. you had a legal obligation to enforce the terms of this document, um, acting as, in so many words, the city's agent, the city's tenant, and, we did and they the were best your we subtenant. Could. We did the best we could. I'm not sure that's a legal legal term that's described in here, the okay. best you can. Let me ask you another question. On page 38, it talks about the required team policies of insurance. Do they have this insurance? That's the insurance that Council of Fowl will refer to in the memo that they typically will, uh, would they get would a default. cancellation notice and then they would pay it before the cancellation date. So we, it always got paid, it's just it was always in question. Do we know if they have insurance right now? I, I do not because as of December 31st, we no longer were involved in the property. As of then they did. Does anyone know? I didn't. I don't think I saw insurance on that list of expenses. Uh, I, as I recall, Mr. Clarks and I had requested. Uh, I think Chris Shepard was the individual you were going to check relative to named additional insurance. Have we had an update on that yet? If you could. Yes, Mr. President. We have been dealing with Chris Shepard from uh, Eastern Insurance, yes. and uh, and I have met with representatives of the team, and they have represented that their obligations under insurance have been fulfilled and we have made sure that on the city side uh, we have insurance uh, as well because have we, we actually did gotten copies of their certificate of insurance no <laughs> we should yes because they have we've, an we've requested that to, to name the city as an additional correct insurance. Lost pay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay that's that, I'm sorry council I just okay. I'm just trying to figure this out for everybody does that go through attorney Nazarella's the city solicitor's office correct but we, we've made that request right now of yes. You and do you know, is this document that we were given, this only covers Campanelli Stadium, it doesn't cover the Shaw's Convention Center, even though it's dated 2012, 2013? Th that document was actually provided to you from our office. Uh, and so in fulfilling the request of the council, I just provided you what we had uh, in, in our office. And, and if you remember when we made the original presentation, excuse me for one second. I did reference this uh, volume, which was put together by my predecessor, uh, which has all of the original documents. Uh, and the, these sticky notes are, are mine that include the original note and uh, all of those. And, and I had mentioned at that meeting that it, happy to review anything in here and provide additional copies. So I'm a little late to the game, uh, but my understanding is at some point during the process, uh, the stadium and the conference center 
uh, were separated in terms of their lease relationship. And, mm -hmm. and so there are documents, and I'm not speaking certainly for Attorney Warren, but I do recall during his testimony at the last meeting where we discussed this, there was some discussion about uh, discrepancies and conflicts between the agreement for the conference center and the stadium. And, and that had been historically for the city part of the struggles uh, in, in enforcing that. Um, so uh, one of the, I, I would like to address the, uh, the, the issue of the insurance uh, because it was uh, uh, a surprise to me uh, when I found out that B21 had, uh, in fact, I believe it was in November, uh, taken out an insurance policy. Uh, and then sometime thereafter, after the first of the year, uh, canceled that policy, which resulted in a substantial refund uh, to B21. And uh, so what, one of the things we're looking forward to in, in that audit, and I as, a, as, a, as the CFO, I'm on the board of B21, is understanding uh, what happened to, to that money with that refund. And uh, although there was a memo sent to uh, to the building department and copied to the mayor uh, addressing the general issue of insurance. Uh, I don't believe there was communication uh, subsequently when the policy w was, was canceled. Uh, so that was a source of concern and frustration for us. Happy to answer any other questions you have. Yes, talk to me about the convention center. Is there insurance on that? Yes. So yes. when we, uh, the city solicitor and I working together, uh, when we found out that there, uh, that there was the potential that the building was not insured, we acted swiftly within 24 hours uh, uh, and in consultation and thanks to Councilor Ian Erie who had some prior information and, and made sure that the, the building, both the conference center and the stadium were insured and I can say to you with certainty today that they are. Okay. Um, but it still has structural problems. The HVAC doesn't work. Yeah, and, and Jim would speak to that better than I, but I did have the opportunity to, uh, to take a tour of the building uh, with, with Jim Kassiri and would echo some of the thoughts uh, that, uh, that, that he shared at a previous meeting, perhaps not as colorfully as he did, but, uh, but certainly share uh, my concerns for the condition of the building. It was uh, in, in deplorable condition. It, is this... Is the convention center now available for let, you know, for functions? So I'll now take that opportunity to 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 heap uh, well-deserved praise on Jim Kassiri because he and his team, since we took over on January 1st, have done an incredible job uh, of getting it ready, and it has uh, had some functions uh, added, including, I believe, the retirement party for the superintendent uh, since the city took mm -hmm. back over. So uh, while it's not in optimal condition now, it's in far better condition than we received it. Okay, and it has insurance. Yes. Thank you, that's it for at this time. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Thank, Thank you, you Council. Mr. Chairman. Council, is any other questions for Mr. Gallerani or? Just have one question to Mr. Casseri, if everyone Mr. Casseri, of course. You know how I love to put you on the spot. <laughs> Col <laughs> colorful <laughs> language or not. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Council, and congratulations, Council Thank President. You. Thank yeah. you, Superintendent. If plumbing work is done, if electrical work is done, if roof repairs for $23,000 are done. Permits required? Plumbing permits and electrical permits are always required. Ordinary repairs wouldn't, but that sounds like it would certainly be required, yeah. Okay. But because the roof is not something that I should go up on with my weight, but I mean, generally people shouldn't go up on the roof, correct? Is there are structural deficiencies? Well, that roof is a, it's, it's a tinny, it's a, it's not, it's one reason I don't want to work on the AC units and the other reason is they're, they're 17 years old and they're just beyond repair. So there's no repairing the AC, they need to be replaced as Mr. Gallerani said. But sending people up on the roof right now isn't a good idea, we just got the leaks under control so the roof's not leaking, I don't want anybody up there disturbing the roof. Do you know of any building electrical or plumbing permits that have ever been issued for the stadium or the rocks as uh, rock stadium or the shaw center i have never in my tenure i don't believe have i no 
No. Okay. Would you, would you before we uh, continue this, uh, when we continue this and when the date is selected, would you just double check for me? Yeah, I'm right. pretty sure though, I Thank remember. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Fowler. Councilor Yanieri, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And don't go away, Commissioner. A um, couple of questions I have, and I think it's, it's something that you and I had discussed um, just about a week or two ago. And when I heard that the Shaw Center was used for a function, I believe because it was, um, I think the uh, uh, pastor or, or whomever of uh, St. Edith's time was leaving the, uh, the city and moving on. And, and um, obviously it was used for um, a function uh, at that particular time. And when I was talking with you, my, I guess my question concern was, um, are we already in the rental process? I mean, are we renting? Um, and if we are, who's uh, in charge? And, and I'd like to know who came up with the fact that we're just gonna charge $1,000 for rental. Um, to me, with everything that's going on, and I think I said this to you, my belief is the place should not be in any use at all whatsoever until we get through all of this mess. That's what I, I call it a mess. I agree. Um, that decision was made by the, the mayor. Um, I asked him not to make that decision, but he, as I recall, we were going to have just a couple of events. And then one of them was a, um, a Haitian community event. I forget what it was. One of them was the retiring priest and the other one was going to be Kathy Smith's retirement. And I told him I couldn't, it w I thought it was a bad idea. At that point, I didn't even have the roof fixed, but there's no AC there. And it's just not feasible that there's going to be AC there for until the audit of the building's done and we get a designer in place and we design, go out to bid. It's, it's not a usable facility, but the, the uh, mayor's office did apparently rent it out for a thousand bucks. Okay, I mean, that, everything at this point in regards to how all that happened prior is all. Is then all we have another one coming up though, in two weeks, and I wish we didn't, and I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but. Well, I, I, guess, I guess it brings to, to my question is, you know, who's the, um, what's the, what's the title I wanna use? Who's the event maker here? Who's, who's the person sitting down to do this? I mean, who- I will tell you the last event- Making the arrangements, I mean- <laughs> Yeah, it's-, it's I, 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 We don't have a, it, it, it's not making sense to me at all. I mean, I realize everyone, you know, there's not many places left in the city to go to, but here we have a situation, as you've described to us, of a, of a facility that is not adequately fit, and, and I think even you indicated to me that at that function, they were complaining because um, the AC wasn't working right. What are we going to do the next time? Well, how can we? Uh, I, I not making sense of what we're doing here. Not you. I understand. Um, I tried to, through the mayor's office, the mayor was going to try to address this for me and try to, to have this next event reschedule someplace else because there's not going to be AC there. It's just not going to happen. I don't think the mayor had an opportunity to do that. So, so when, when is the next function? It's a week from, it's the 27th, it's a Friday night. 27th, and is that the one where we're gonna have food trucks and we're gonna have music and- No, that's, that's uh, oh, no, this is a, um, an event that is uh, being done through the Cape Verdean Association, I believe. Okay, well, obviously, it's a bad idea. We're but. going to have to get to the acting mayor and we're gonna to have to have a little discussion. So I guess he's he's gonna to start to earn his paycheck because- Well, well my issue was- Here with having that and there's also an issue with me. As you know, I went through, I went through holy heck a few weeks ago when there was a concert held yeah. there. And I know some of my people here said, it's just a concert, it's just music. It's noise and it was noise, it was overwhelming. And when I complain about noise and I can hear it coming through my kitchen, I've got a problem. Right. And as far as I've said before, the place 
should be closed until we've done what needs to be done and we know where all the finances are going and people have to start to we've got to start to do that because it's, it's just not right and, and um, my concern is now there's I know there's a couple things coming up with the license commission I've already told the license commission they need to get in contact with those groups because I don't want to hear that particular type of noise I'm not saying cancel them but if we have to cancel them they're gonna have to be canceled and if the noise is too loud I don't have one bit of a problem going up there and pulling the plug myself. I mean, because it just can't happen. Um, I just, I don't, nope. I'm not putting nothing on you. I really am not. And we can't, what happened, we have to, we all have to take a deep breath sometimes and then we have to say whatever was going on in the mayor's office, that that's old hat now. We've got to move forward to make a, a couple, correction. A couple of concerns I have on this renting of the stadium is if we're going to say yes to people for a thousand dollars who we're going to say no to right and you know we've already said yes a few times so i'm just i i went saw T tobias and i told him it's no to everybody for now on and the other thing is it, it it's costing the city more money than we're making off the thousand dollars so with that's a misappropriation in my mind who came up with a thousand dollars that was done through the <laughs> mayor's office. And when you look at when you look at the first function, I don't know. You're looking at you're looking at how many people attended the first function. What was it? Uh, 500 people at uh, 20 dollars a ticket, 25 dollars a ticket. Or I think the tickets were 40 dollars. 40 dollars. Oh, well, I, okay. So, I I don't know if the the good good reverend left with a you know a, a good gift or not. Oh, okay. I mean, I can understand that they were trying to do something, but still, it's not. I have a problem with it, and I hope the other councils are listening to it because I think the taxpayers have no doubt about it. But uh, I just don't think nothing should be there at, at this point, and uh, um, it, it it does disturb me that you know we're, we're using it when you're trying to put it back together. It doesn't make it, sense. It kind of it kind of bothers me that I get I'm put right in the middle of this I, thing. I'm the guy that's going to have to be the bad guy right now, but right. it's just the way it is. I'm not supplying people anymore. It took me 77 man hours to run that last, to, to have that last event take place. That's three guys full time for a week. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's what the citizens of Brockton are entrusting me with the, my budget to do. That's not what it's for. So. It's, it's, it, it, this is something that's going to be, you know, it's going to go on and once the audit comes back to us, like Council Fowler says, I'm sure he'll have other questions too, but I think this is something that's going to go on for some, some time. This isn't going to, this isn't going to end in a, in a couple of months, but I think we need to, we need to stop from, from the usage of it. We I mean, are. The, the game's okay, I can understand, but, and they're going to, they only go to August anyways, and August is just a, a few weeks away, but after that. I think a good use for that, you know, the city shouldn't try to do what professionals have been unable to do there. We shouldn't be in the business of running. Uh, no. no. I mean, that's Einstein's uh, definition of insanity, to keep doing the same you thing know, over and over again. I, um, I think, we've got I think the school department, along with the vocational school, could have some culinary arts programs there where maybe they could run the facility and teach kids how to be cooks and run events and then they could actually run events that way but exactly. it wouldn't be a for-profit kind of thing maybe that would work or uh, maybe uh, just call the we buy ugly houses people and sell that thing so uh, i don't know you just took Something. the words out of my mouth uh, we come up with the assessed value we know what it, it's assessed at and we we make a movement to to sell it and and uh, we bring in some revenue in, into the city and and that helps us put about you know 25 no more police officers on the street too. So I mean, this is something we're gonna have to take a look at it because it wore out its its time. I always said it from day one. The thing was just more or less a gimmick. It was great. It was great. Everyone enjoyed us. We all enjoyed ourselves up there 12, 15 years ago. Yeah, we did. It was but nice. Those days are gone. And right now with a building, I, I really I'm just and after what I went through a couple weekends ago, I'm not gonna I, I'm 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 not gonna go through it again. But anyhow. It's not your fault. It, yeah. it, at this point, I'm not putting a finger to anybody, but we all need to come together, everybody, and, and, and what are we going to do with it, and not just keep yeah. asking the questions of where this check go, that check go, this check go. Uh, let's make a decision here. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Councilor Neri. Councilor Beauregard, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. I'm sorry. Um, can you? Please. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm not, I just, I want to make sure that we, we say something, you know, very straight here. There's the stadium and there's the function facility. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm in complete agreement with you that we should not rent the function facility until certainly it, it meets all the standards it's supposed to, you know, under your, you know, supervision. And like you said, where they came up with a thousand dollars, okay. And I'm not trying to be difficult to any organization. There are other facilities, but right now it would appear that there could be some situations that might not fare well should someone have events, you know, continue to have events there because they have the difficulties. I do believe you've done a great job. It looks really nice for the superintendent's retirement. And I mean, how do I say, you didn't even pay attention to the air conditioning because everyone had the doors open back right. and forth. Yeah. But to me, that's one thing, okay? And I am in complete agreement with you to give it to the school department in some way, you know, certainly, you know, properly and with all the steps and very transparent because it just makes sense that vocational technical education is expanding and it seems like it could work as a benefit. And besides, the citizens of the city own the schools, so they might as well, you know, own that, you know, that being an extension of the schools. So that's one entity. The other one is the stadium. And again, you know, if that sh the need should arise that the students need that, I am well aware that the baseball plays there. But to me, I see people come in front of license commission for stadium events. I mean, just recently there was posted that they're going to have three food truck events, I have to say that right, and they're going to be outside the stadium and somewhere in it with music, but again, not, um, how would I say, bands. See. So that, to me, is a little bit different, and that's what I wanna make sure that, I'm, I'm not saying that the stadium does not need, <laughs> what I say it, reconstructive surgery but at the same time i just think it's pretty important to just yeah i don't truck. i don't really i mean they have a lease the the rocks <laughs> have a lease i believe that they can use that stadium and they can have the events they're having there i don't get involved with them i mean i don't have any say over it i think that their lease is that they can use that stadium to try to make money for themselves so they can have these events there. <laughs> I don't think that there's anything, and that would be, yeah. perhaps Phil would say, but I mean, I think there's a lease that the, the owners of the Rocks have that they can make money off that stadium and they can have concerts and they can have events there and I don't even get involved <laughs> with it. It's really, get, I'm not even involved in it. Yeah. So I think that that is their agreement that they can do that, Wouldn't, isn't that correct? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't get involved in all that. I really don't get involved in the legal aspects, but no, I, wasn't I don't think you're going to be able to say you can't have events there because that's what they do. Yeah. I wasn't, I mean, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that we were talking about the Shaw Center. Right. And functions there. Exactly. And I know that there's several components to the stadium. And I see Todd come up there and present a license commission like every other month for something going on. And um, that's, so that's made public at the point. I mean, more, you know, more than once that they've approached with an idea, but they didn't have all the steps in place, so they had to come back, you know, f to license. So I just, I want people to understand tonight that to, you know, right to me as, you know, a city council and along with yourself, that we should turn around and for the safety of both the people, the people that rent the center, the Shaw's Center, the Conference Center, understand that that's how we're um, we're not going to do anything, right? Because you are the superintendent of buildings, and you are authorized, and you can tell us there's problems with electricity, without a doubt, with the air conditioning, etc. Then I think, thank you, that we can turn around and look at the other aspect of the stadium and all the proponents to it. And I, I don't think that right now we should, how would I say, give you more because you have more than enough to handle. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I mean, I think we're a year away from that place being really habitable. And that's, yes. that's not counting having some kind of staff in place. I mean, if we shouldn't be in the conference center business. It's just we're not no, set up no, for I, it. I completely agree. I completely agree. And I just, how would I say it? I think you've come and taken care of an emergency, sort of like when <clears throat> people have to deal with the damage of after a hurricane or something. 
and this was even more, and this could have been preventable. That's the worst part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor uh, Beauregard. Councilor Derencourt, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, it's good to see the superintendent. Um, I mean, I think we all know that, or at least personally, that the building or the show center uh, is not in good shape as we speak to actually have function there, but that's what's it though. As we speak, uh, we do not have any facility in the city that can actually hold more than like 300 people. And the only place that we have is that place. Uh, I can say publicly that I'm against selling it to any entity. Um, you know, the 21st um, group obviously have done a pretty bad job in regard to taking care of this building. I think that we have this conversation before, but I think the so question should be, how do we turn this place into a place where we, the resident, can actually have events there and also enjoy the place because selling the place would be like, you know, where do we, like where do we go if we want to do something? So I think that we know the place is not in good shape. We know that uh, we have a lot of work to do, but the question is, how do we get the resources? So are you are you asking me what it? No, would no, no. I'm just saying a general statement in terms of like um, I I heard some of my colleagues uh, saying that you know we should definitely you know turn the way you know, to some other entity. So right. I, I just want to say publicly that. No, but are you implying that we have a facility that can have 500 people that the city should operate it somehow? I'm well, not I mean, sure. let's face it though, I am not in the business of determining whether or not the city should be in charge of it, but as an elected official, I think it is my obligation to make sure that if we take over something, we act accordingly. Obviously, you and I have a conversation we get to what happened to this building. And obviously, we know the place is not a good place as we speak to our events. I understand that. The question is, where do we get the resources to turn this place into a good place where, obviously, whomever is in charge of it can actually hold events where the city well. can actually make money of it. So you said that the thousand dollars is not enough. Um, I don't really know um, whether or not it's enough or not, but I think if we believe that one thousand dollars is not enough, how do we increase the price and yeah, invite people to take over the place, as opposed to just like saying that you know it's 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 a bad place. Let's just give it away to some entity. Let's give it away to work in high school. I don't think that's a good approach. This is not you literally, because as we speak, you are trying to save this place. I mean, you are trying to sell to save this building. What I'm saying is that given the fact that this is the only facility that we have in this city. I mean, sometimes even- well, there's I the Massasoit say. Conference Center and there's the perfect place on the well, south side. The I mean, Conference Center. And the Massasoit is selling their conference center, so obviously they can't make a run of it either. No. Maybe I mean, it's just a bad business to have in Brockton that well, does as I a business. See, what I was saying about the schools is they could run events there. The, the, the kids who were taking the culinary classes, they could cook the food and they could have the waiters and they could have the coat room attendants and they could have the custodians and you could actually have events there is what I was saying. Yeah, I mean, it's like my statement. But the city, if the city did it, we'd have to m create a whole new department. Oh, we'd have I just, I just, I've given a lot of leeway tonight. Okay. We're getting off well, track. I just, I think that though, I just took this mic and I've observed some folks speak for hours or even minutes. My point is that I guess it's not really in regard to you. The point is that you just said it. I myself serve on the board of trustee for Massachusetts Community College. So I do have knowledge in regard to what's going on there. You just said it. They are selling it. You mentioned the perfect place. I mean, w of course, the perfect place is a good place. But I don't think we have a decent place as we speak in the city for people to hold events. My statement has nothing to do in regard to your view about this place. But I think that if we believe there is an issue about this building, why can't we put the resources that we need and then turn this place around? Because if we believe they, 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 were, they, they weren't able to actually do a good job, I mean, I think it is our job, given the fact that now we have a new mayor, I think it would be important to sit down with Mayor Moses Rodriguez to determine how we go from there. We just said we don't believe that $1,000 is enough because you said the city is losing money. Yes, I'm okay with not having any event now as we speak. I'm 100% okay with that. But the question is, we cannot just shut it down just because the place is not Well, good. we're not. We're, we're having the survey done right now by the Amoresco group, who's going to determine the repairs that are necessary. They're going to design the uh, rooftop units. They're going to design the heating systems. They're going to give us that plan. And then, then you're talking about procurement laws and bidding. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot to it. So. We are doing what you're saying. We are. That's what we're working on. Yeah, and so and it's I'm a year away, probably. Yeah, what I'm saying is that with my understanding, you are the building guy. I mean, you and I spoke about certain things. I do believe you do have the ability and also the knowledge to, to turn this place around. 
So what I'm against is actually um, giving it away to, uh, to another entity. So what I'm saying is not really up to you, but I think the city, we, I mean, we are the only city in the Plymouth County. I think we should be able to come up with a group of smart people, you know, to find a way in which we can actually advance this place as opposed to thinking about selling it. I am 100% against it because the problem is that, you just said it, I'm gonna repeat myself again. The Master Sweat Community Center, they are conference center, they are selling it. The perfect place, I mean, obviously it's a good place, but these places are not big enough for Chairman, us to do just events. A point of order for Council. Just a point of order, I, I, I would fully support a discussion at a later time about staffing that's needed, mm -hmm. rules and regulations for using that venue when it's done, uh, and, and uh, what the future uses should be. Tonight, because uh, I filed this, it was more of an operational, financial, and Oh, it's about contract audit. obligations and invoices. So we're getting a little bit off track. Yeah, I so think they're all great questions and we need to continue it. I, I but agree. But if we, if we follow the letter of the law of the resolve, it was about specific defined entities within the resolve itself. Yeah, I guess, I guess a little my bit point off. of order is a, a subsequent resolve should be filed if we want to get into that. And, okay. and I'd be perfectly willing to do it, okay. but it really wasn't part of this, that's all. Mr. Chairman, I believe I still have the floor. I'm going to close do. like that. Okay. So uh, from my understanding, I mean, obviously, I understand this was going to happen. It was okay to actually talk about selling it as opposed to talking about not selling it. So with that being said, Mr. Chairman, I will heal my time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Isaac, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioner Mike. I have two questions. One, I believe you'd be able to, you'll be able to answer for me. You mentioned 77 man hours, three guys full time for one week, but we didn't. I didn't hear a dollar amount. Do you have a dollar amount? What it's cost the department? And um, um, I know that a thousand dollars is nothing compared to what we've spent. But I just, where are we, like, money wise? Over three grand. Over three grand yeah. per function for that last one wow okay All right. okay and the uh, next question i have i uh mr gallerani maybe you can answer this for me we have since we've taken over we've done repairs um i as we all know and we've killed the subject we've all taught it it was in the stadium was in horrendous shape as well <laughs> as um, the shaw center we're working we, we've put in man hours the city has spent money to to fix um, the roof, we everybody knows where we're at, but what I would like to know is what are we doing to protect ourselves from this happening again? Because they have shown, the, the tenants at the Rocks, well, the Rocks, uh, have shown that they are negligent tenants, and I don't wanna see us in the same situation another year or two down the line, or whenever. I know their lease would, was coming up eventually at one point, but I want, I would like to make sure that we're not in the same situation a year or two down the line with some other issues. And I cannot speak to that because as of December 31st, we were no longer part of this. It's just. Right, it so was, the city, so maybe so the then city, but Attorney Nazarella can answer yeah, that for me. Well, I know that. Well, I have the microphone. Can, <laughs> okay, I, can sure. I clarify a couple of things? We, B21, um, during one of the default process with EMC, um, demanded the keys to the Shaw Center as part of the agreement. Um, Brent will attest to this. The night that we took over, which was February 28th of last year, we monitored their cleaning, their, their, the operator that they had put in place was vacating. We were monitoring that. He and I walked into the kitchen and were attacked by flies. That's when I looked at him and said, well, we're just going to close this down. This, we couldn't continue. So to go to the issue of a moratorium uh, of use, that was why all of 18, that there were no events other than the three events that were previously booked, that I was shocked that were booked. Um, deposits were taken, <coughs> but we never saw that money. We never saw a dime out of the Shaw Center for all of 18. Um, it was a transition that we intended. Um, and what, what Mr. Casaria said about the school department, that was part of the conversation was how, does the, how do we take this forward? We advertised it twice looking for operators. Uh, honestly, the operators that came forward thought they should get it for free and not have to pay us anything. They thought it should just be 
their own private business because they were going to make themselves available to city groups and too bad. Um, obviously, we rejected those. Um, nobody, nobody that we had hoped would show an interest did show an interest. Decisions were made because at that point thinking, okay, long term, as Mr. Kasseri framed the, the idea of this, a school, Massasoit and vocational school coming together, um, we started moving forward with making improvements. Painting the facility inside because it was multiple shades of municipal green. Um, cleaning it, that kitchen was beyond belief in terms of the grease and the dirt and the grime. Um, making minor repairs, still not knowing what the outcome was gonna be. Uh, and as you know, it took 77 hours for one event. So you can imagine what went on all of last year while we were trying to get it in order. And then the roof pretty much weighed in and told us that we were wasting our time. So without the new roof and new HVAC system, as Mr. Kazari pointed out, this is just, just spinning the wheels. Uh, I hold, agree wholeheartedly the facility shouldn't be used except on a very limited basis, but you also have to keep in mind, and, and, and maybe he's corrected the roof, fine, great. But that was always my thing. Promise me it won't rain, and I'll tell you, you can hold your event. Um, we were very limited in terms of who we allowed to use it last year. The chamber was the only one, and we held our board meetings there. Um, so. Well, I'm not in support of that the city paying for anybody's event, not not mine or anybody else's. Right. I think so. I'm I'm disappointed to hear that it's we've literally paid for people to have events there, and um, and it's it's just sad. But I, and I understand, and thank you for your information. We did go over it. I know in the past meeting we also some of the same issues came up. But um, so my question is, and that maybe Attorney Nazarella could answer it. Thank you, Mr. Gallarani. Um, I just want to make sure we're not in the same situation again, whether it's with the stadium or if we end up leasing the Shaw Center to anybody. Whatever we end up doing, I, I fear that we're going to make the same mistakes again, and um, how are we protecting ourselves? Well, I know now that uh, Mr. Kassiri has identified the physical problems of the, um, the facility, uh, I don't expect we'll make the same mistakes. I don't have any role or participation on what you're going to do with it in the future. If you're going to lease it, you're going to modify it, you're going to close it. But um, it depends on the particular mistake you're talking about, Councillor, as to whether or not we'll, we'll um, replay it. So with the existing tenant with, at, the, at the stadium, there's nothing we can do to make sure that they don't let the stadium go back into the same state that they let it get to i mean they did it, it was no, negligence i think there are I mean, guidelines I, that we could we can enforce to monitor and compel that they adhere to what uh, good operational facilities are supposed to comply with how much oversight there was before <coughs> i don't know it's something my department was never involved in uh this all came in my lap relatively recent and uh but i've been um, able to collaborate with attorney brent warren and receive many of the documents which I'm still receiving to bring myself up to speed about it. Okay, so is your department now in, ch is your department in charge we're, in case? Well, we're involved. Okay. I mean, is anybody maybe, is somebody in there regularly from the city with it? That I don't know. Th that's I don't leave my office, like whether or not Mr. Is Kassiris somebody keeping an eye on them? Because yeah. I mean, I, I anywhere else they'd be thrown out. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. So uh, somebody that, that's checking a pretty good question. Who's in charge and who's who in, charge in charge of monitoring it? Um, I, maybe Mr. Kasseri would have a response to that. I don't know, Mr. it's not me. Please, yes, Mr. Kasseri. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're in there regularly, okay. our guys. Because that's, that's my biggest concern is I I think somebody needs to make sure that it doesn't, we're not spending even more money if you, you know, a right. year I mean, or who knows, two or however long they're left I'm, in I'm trying to keep the lights on, as Troy would say. I mean, that's, you gave me 125, I think, in the budget, and that'll, you know, that's to pay for heat and electricity, um, those expenses. Uh, we're going to 
we bought heaters and we kept them running all winter to make sure the place didn't freeze up along with the ones that were already there. Um, but we're in there okay. often. Well, I appreciate that and I hope that we just keep on, now it is our, it does belong to the city. I know many years people ask the question who, who actually owns it. I was never able to tell them, but now we can say that it is the city, so I want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on it, that we don't find ourselves in. Um, yeah, we're trying. Work. But that's, you brought up electricity, and I don't want to keep us here for much longer, but that was another question that was said to me. Why are we paying their electric bill and heating bill? Well, it was the winter time, and uh, I was in Troy's office, and Jay happened to be there as well. Is that correct, Jay? Um, Troy, right. And um, we agreed, and Jay's recommendation also was just pay that bill. We'll figure it out later. We didn't want to okay. not pay that bill and have them shut us off. So, Because that's another thing. They're negligent. They leave the lights on, and I think that came up during the last meeting as well, mm -hmm. as the lights are always on, and I guess if they're not paying the bill, they don't care, so right. um, <laughs> I just want, I think we need to be good landlords, make sure that they know that we're, we're concerned and that, they, um, that they're good tenants. So thank you, Mr. Kasiri. You're welcome, thank, thank you. you. Thank Chairman. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Gallarani, I just had one question. I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to get some clarification relative to your current role at B21. It's my understanding, are you a consultant? You come in one day a week? I'm I, come just in, I come in one day a week. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm still on the payroll one day a week. And I come in to administer, check the, you know, go through all it's, the It's one the dedicated emails. day a week, is it a Friday? Fridays. Or it's a Friday. Typically Fridays. And is there, is, do you plan on, You've already taken another job somewhere else. Oh yes. yes. So, are you going to be doing this for a while, or is there an uh, end date? It's up. To, it's up to the board. I actually, when I started it, I said by the end of 18, I would be done. Okay. We continued. The board had me continue and continue, and here we are. It's July. Uh, it could. It could be over. Anytime. So it's like an employee. Or it will. could be. Yes, and it could okay. be longer. Um, okay. Because honestly, B21 is going through a transition of no longer having to have the stadium and the conference center as a heavy weight to carry. Yep. The organization has gone through the process of, okay, now how do we reinvent this and, and become a, the economic development entity that it should be. So I'm, right. I'm playing a key role in that process. Okay. And then, then I'm done. Thank you for clarifying okay. that. Council, is there any other questions or follow-ups? Or Council Yaneri. Just one quick question to the commissioner. <laughs> one quick question. The gentlemen that was storing items, are they still in there? There are, there is some stuff still yeah, well, in there. Well, let's find a way to evict them. Yeah. Okay, because they, they do not, they, they don't belong there. Yeah. When I you agree. ride through there and you ride through that driveway and you see just piles of junk up against it, it's not right. I know this, this is a hot topic, this, what we're talking about, but right. it's just one thing. Yeah. We got a whole bunch of other stuff going on too, so. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm trying. Well, we got to do something, we got to do something with that, because that's, that's, to me, that's not right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Fowell, move, you have the floor. Move, move to postpone to Second. the August 19th meeting. FinCom. Second. Uh, there's a motion on the floor for a date specific, August 19th, uh, continued till that day. It was properly seconded. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. It will be continued this matter until August 19th at 7 p.m. finance. Uh, Councillors, just, uh, just for Clarification again, we're in the summer months, but we will have a full city council meeting next Monday night, the 22nd here. Yeah. Uh, the following Monday would be the fifth Monday and we, we wouldn't be here. So it'll be seven o'clock um, next next Monday night. Anything else before us? Councilor Beauregard, please. Thank you, just a moment of personal privilege here, privileges. Um, want to keep on reminding people that they have the summer meals program for the kids. They have various locations and at this, uh, you know, they, they cite here Trinity Catholic Academy, George School, Edison Academy, Arnone, and Broughton High. And this goes through the months here, and I'll give a phone number, 508-580-7514. If uh, people, you know, need these services for the kids over the summer, you. want to um, invite and encourage people to support the kickoff of the Census 2020 that will take place on uh, Thursday morning, July 18th, at the Brockton Main Library at 10 a.m. 
Uh, the census is vital to this community, and the sooner that we get people involved, the better. And last but not least, the last time we were here, I announced that uh, they were having the Frederick Douglass event. And this year, not only were more, um, more people in attendance, more people participated, and uh, PBS had uh, hired a film company to tape it to recognize uh, all, the, all that's uh, done. And you know, we certainly want to take, thank Lynn Smith for all she does for um, you know, recognizing the history of Frederick Douglass and the city and, of And Lynn's here thank in you. the chamber. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions or any uh, statements, Councilors? Seeing none, the meeting's hereby adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>